so let's take a look at what we have developed with our employee and utils and all the stuff go through it very quickly and then we are going to talk about we are going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about oh, I closed it let me just open the content one more time or is that AA so if we look at weekly schedule what we have uh, set uh, for today is constructors and destructors okay so and that's what we are going to do construction and destruction so this is what we are going to go through right now but first before we can start talking about that let's actually go through our code and see what we have designed so we created a class we called company and our company uh, I'm going to remove all the comments that uh, uh, was from the previous one uh, like the, the extra code and what's going on in here why it says it let me just re rebuild everything let me see if it's okay everything's fine but IntelliSense for some reason says it can't find it anyway so we created uh, uh, the class employee over here with salary and yada 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 a name and employee ID we we we, we uh, found out that we can uh <coughs> oh so these are the things that are gone and we don't have it that's why we don't need it let me recompile so IntelliSense is not wrong I was wrong that's how we um, uh, talked about um, member functions anyway so we created the class employee and in this class employee we hire we said an employee can get hired or can get displayed um, and then uh, we created a company and in our in our company we said our company has a name that is dynamically allocated it has series of employees that is essentially an array of class employee uh, that we said we do not need to include employee.h because it's only a pointer we can forward declare so I'm just gonna remove that <coughs> so we are forward declaring the, the the workers because it's only a pointer if it wasn't a pointer I had to include it and I have a name I, I have number of employees in the company total number of employees is going to take care of we can set number of employees in this uh, company we can display the name of the company we can delete all the employees start and we can start the uh, company in two different ways we can let me just bring it up over here <coughs> so we can start the company in two different ways and the two company the, the two ways that we can start either we can start the company by asking the company name from the user or we can start the company by providing the name and do the dynamic memory allocation for it which essentially starting the company with uh, 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 this uh, start with no argument uh, gets the value and then calls the start with the one that passes the value to it and that's how dynamic memory allocation happens using our utility SDRLN plus one <coughs> and it's going to uh, uh, create uh, uh, the the class for us <coughs> and also we can set the number of <coughs> employees and number of <coughs> my apologies <coughs> number of employees are being set uh, uh, by displaying the name um, of the company and asking the the user to enter the values and uh, uh, with display name we display the employees uh, with higher employee uh, what we essentially do we resize the employee and make it bigger and add <coughs> um, more employees to it um, uh, so uh, with delete employees I wipe out all the employees with list employee I display all the employees that are working for the company uh, with hire I'll do an initial hiring for all the employees that I want to hire to the number of employees that I have in a company and uh, uh, these two uh, this this query returns how many employees I have in my in my company uh, are we okay with this or um, are we okay with the with the uh, employee and company that we have created 
<coughs> so the problem of uh, this employee class that we created over here was that in main when I'm actually uh, oh this main doesn't belong to employee let me just bring the main that belongs to it uh, just a second I should have an employee main in here or company main company main that's the one let me open it up copy paste it okay so going through it quickly um, we uh, start the company like this so as as the company is getting created the two objects of company are getting created they're going to have some values set automatically to it because we have default values created for the uh, member variables but this one's going to have garbage in it so there is no nothing in here uh, for the employees uh, that are g the no employees are getting created because uh, uh, the employees only a pointer so <coughs> this is going to uh, create the company as for the company name uh, so op244 zaa did we uh, let me see if yeah so companies uh, and hire uh, number of employees uh, number of employees to hire I'm gonna say two okay then <coughs> Uh, uh, we are going to start so by this by doing this the first start over here I asked the number of employees and the second one is starting the the next one with Seneca College and uh, we deal with it and everything looks fine and everything's dandy the problem over here is that when I I have to remember to start a company before I do anything with it I have to and then and then do everything like this like hiring and everything and when it's done I have to remember to close down the company if I don't do this I am going to have memory leak uh, do we understand this <coughs> so let's <coughs> for this <coughs> let's give you a very simple example <coughs> and then we can reuse this example in the employee so let's say for uh, the name that we want to use for an employee or any name that we want to use for for anything we, I want to have a class that represents a name so uh, it does everything that a name is supposed to do so I'm gonna close these things and I'm gonna create a class that represents a name so I can actually receive a name and display a name so what what I will do I'm gonna create a class name new item and I'm gonna use that uh, wizard thingy and in here I'm gonna call this name the name so it's gonna be a class with a header file and a CTT file and this name class of mine I am going to create the compilation safeguard so if not define in here is gonna be stds name h and I hope that you appreciate the number of times I'm doing this so so you remember that this is how it's supposed to be done before we do anything as you see <coughs> I'm just creating a simple class name and before doing anything first I'm gonna create an empty shell for my uh, module and then I'm gonna start coding in it so namespace SDDS <coughs> and then I'm gonna go to uh, name.cpp and in name.cpp I am going to have namespace sdds and now I have uh, an empty module ready to code my stuff in are we okay with this so if I want to have a name I don't know what the length of a name is and in here as you see for company name I am having a, a, a separate uh, dynamic thing that I'm creating and in the other one over here name I'm creating a static one for the name of an employee so the name of an employee is actually holding uh, holding the statically allocated memory for 41 that's not a good thing I want a name any name that I want to give to someone I want that name to be a dynamic thing that I can deal with it and work with it properly therefore I want to create a class that handles it so for that in here I'm gonna create a class name and I'm gonna 
put over here character over here and I'm going to call M and that's going to be the value. So the value of the name character pointer is going to hold the name for me. Uh, are we okay with this? So if I want to do this, obviously I need a public thing. I need to be able to set this name to a value. So it's a constant character pointer name I need to have over here. And I need to be able to, uh, so that's uh, a void. I need to be able to get the value of the name. So I'm going to create a constant character pointer. And I'm going to call this one get. So it's going to actually get the name and return it out. And the next thing I need to do over here is to be able to display the name. So um, display the name. I'm going to call it uh, void display. And so these are the, the things that I want to create. But there are certain things that uh, I need to follow to, to be able to do this. And, and another thing that I need to do, it's very, very important over here, is to actually deallocate the name when the name is over, when the, when the work with the name is done. So doing this, so I, I have a set, I have a get, I have a display, and I have a deallocate. <coughs> All right. Now there is something new that we haven't done to the company and employee. I'm going to apply it to name and I'm going to let you know what is this. So uh, you need to have uh, um, like your focus on it right now. Um, I, I, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, be ready. You're going to uh, activate your microphone and you're, gonna, you're going to talk. So, <clears throat> uh, Samuel, uh, are you with me? <clears throat> I want to hear a yes. Yes. There we go. So keep your microphone on. Samuel, the function set over here, would it change the content of the attribute of the name? The function set will this function modify the name so uh, when after set is done so after set is called will the name change I have a this is my question yes or no uh. oh your 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 uh, your um, uh, voice is very faint very 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 low volume like, at least please put the microphone in, in front of your mouth so I can hear. So it's yes or no? Yes. Yes, perfect. So it will change, obviously. Why? Because when set is called, I'm going to allocate memory, uh, put name in here, and do stuff like that. Beautiful. So now <clears throat> the next person who's going to answer over here would be this. So uh, Kiran Dip, I want to hear a yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, Sarah is your father. My name is Farda. Okay. <laughs> okay, so so when the function get is called, after you call get, now I want you to think clearly, after get is called, okay, will the name change? Um, so this is going to tell you what is the value inside, what is the name inside the value. Will it change the name? No. No, thank you. You're my girl. Thank you. So we have to make sure we enforce that, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I'm done. Thank you. So if that's the case, the function get, we should enforce it to make sure that even if we want to, get will not change the name because that's the business logic. Do you, anybody remembers what the business logic is when I say when I say business logic? What do I mean by that? Anybody remembers? Can, can, can somebody who said yes to actually uh, explain it? Stephen or, or, or Coke? Business logic is something like what the business wants, like their customization to the program. If they want to keep something accessible or not, like, what does they exactly. want? Exactly. What are, what are the rules and regulations of the business? Uh, perfectly correct. And in our business, I'm saying when you are asking for someone's names, if I say, Stephen, what is uh, your, your middle name? Stephen is going to say David, correct? 
if Stephen's going to say David, his name is not going to change to Paul. <laughs> it's going to still remain David. So asking for a name should not change the name. So I have to enforce that by adding a const over here. So when you add a const after it, and it's only applied to attributes, so to, to a member function, to a method, you can enforce a member function not to change the owner by adding a const after the prototype. Okay, so by adding a const over here, you're saying, I am not going to change the, the, the value. Uh, are we okay with this? All right. Okay, so that's good. Now the next thing in here I want to I want to talk about is this. So this display that I have over here, <clears throat> I I have no particular reason for what I'm gonna do right now. I want you to memorize it, and later on you'll understand why. From now on, till the end of time when you are doing any type of console programming from now to the time that you are doing console programming okay if you are to display a name if you are to display a name you should remember that the display that the display should be uh, set set like this you should return an O stream which is essentially C out that display uses to print, and you should receive an O stream reference that is defaulted to C out. So this is the way uh, display has to be set. And I am going to include over here an IO stream for it, but remember that we are not allowed to, to uh, 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 to um, what else I can uh, what is synonym of use anybody knows whose English is better than me what is a synonym for use to apply yeah we are not to allowed to apply apply using namespace space in a header file okay so remember that I cannot say using namespace std okay therefore I cannot say I cannot write here using namespace std and instead I have to manually qualify all objects and classes created in io stream okay because of that i cannot say o stream i have to say std scope resolution o stream std scope resolution o stream reference std c out so that will be the display that i have are we okay with this And this OStream reference, I usually call it OSTR. So the name of the variable is OSTR <coughs> equals to STDC out, which means if you do not, uh, if you call display with no arguments, C out is going to go into it. Okay. So my question to the next person is that is, uh, David already talked. Uh, so, uh, Ustav, or Ustav, how do, how do I spell your name? So it's so. So okay, it's so. Yeah. Uh, so um, now my question again is for display. After display is called, will the name change? No. No. Fantastic. So a display must be constant too, and maybe I want to get the name from the screen. So maybe I want to thank you, uh, 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 Utsav. So. 
the maybe I want to get the name to from so I want to read it so if I want to do it that's gonna be STD iStream reference and I'm gonna say read to read it from console and it's gonna be STD iStream reference ISTR equals STD CN now my question is to <laughs> far that no I'm not gonna ask myself uh, uh, Kiran Dip, did I ask you a question already? Um, yes. I did. So in that case, cock uh, uh, is the uh, yes, the next one. So uh, how do I pronounce your name? Kaki? How do I say yes. it? Yes, correct. Kaki is correct. Okay, Kaki. So Kaki. So Kaki. Uh, my question goes to this uh, read function. When the read function is called. Do you think the name will change? I think not. You don't think so? So when yeah. I'm reading, I am asking to get a value from the user to set the value oh, oh. of the name to a new oh, thing. Yes, it will change. It will change. So cannot be const since it will change the name <clears throat> okay and also xiao yi uh xiao yu i don't know how to pronounce it again if you help me i would appreciate it uh xiao yu yes xiao yu okay xiao yu okay xiao yu now the allocate do you think it's going to change the name mm uh yes yes it will change the name because it has to deallocate the value and throw the name away therefore the same thing stands for here it cannot change the name so it cannot remain constant okay so i have a set i have a get i have a display and i have all these good stuff over here so let's set it let's do it one by one for first of all we're gonna do set so to create set what i need to do over here is to uh get this so first i have to say uh, m value is set to new character to the length of uh, i need utils so i'm going to add utils over here where do i need utils i needed a name so in here i'm going to add include utils.h so i can actually use my utilities <coughs> so in here i'm going to say uh u dot uh save everything Okay, so in here I'm going to say u.strlen of name plus one to uh, allocate memory, and then I'm going to say u.strcopy into m value the value of name. And I'm going to only do this one if name is not null and name has something in it. Actually, no, I don't need to do if name is empty. Unless our business logic says you cannot set a name to an empty thing if you are setting, you're supposed to set it to something. So, so if the business logic dictates that, so if the business logic dictates that uh, uh, you cannot set a name to an empty thing, then this is the thing. So we, we're going to do. And if, if this happens, I'm going to set my name to an safe empty state, which if that's the case, because I am setting in here, I'm going to say m value uh, will be set to null PTR. <coughs> OK, now uh, for the people who are looking at it, what is wrong with the code I have written in here for the set? Can anybody tell me what is wrong with this? Anyone? Can anybody tell me what is wrong with this code? Let me tell you what is wrong with this code. <coughs> Blindly, I started to set can be called at any time in the program, halfway, beginning, anywhere. Do we understand this? You can call the set function to set a name at any time. Do we understand this? So what if I, what if I, 
already have a name so what if I already have a name and this is the value and the value is actually pointing to an already existing name if that's the case when I am it's it is actually setting to an already existing value if that's the case what happens over here it's gonna come over here say m value is equal to new character so what it's going to do is actually setting the value to a new piece of memory and because of that fact what happens is that this will this will actually get severed and a new piece of memory is created for it problem is that then what happens to this guy over here what is this thing called can anybody tell me In what's gonna happen when I have a piece of memory and I did not delete it and it stayed in memory we call it memory leak memory leak so I could have memory leak with set so what I need to do over here is this <clears throat> so if the action of setting is about to happen in any case if the action of setting in is, is about to happen what I need to do in here is to say <coughs> delete mm, should I delete it over here no I'm gonna delete it over here so in here uh, so I'm gonna say if it is like that then yeah so I am going to completely delete it so I'm gonna say over here delete and value and because I don't know if the setting is gonna happen or not I'm gonna say M value is set to null PTR to make sure that I follow the rules and therefore I don't have to write the else anymore so it oh I delegate delete okay so it's gonna delete the M value and it's gonna say set it to null PTR and then I'm gonna do my memory allocation so if anything was there it's gonna get deleted other than that uh, we're gonna do this are we okay with this so that's our set so we created our set and after creating the set I'm gonna create the get get is an easy one because I have nothing to do over here but returning m value so get is returning m value and everything's fine and dandy over there no problem over there <coughs> Display is supposed to display what we have using OStream, so uh, using OSDR. So I'm going to create the display, and because display is actually receiving the OSDR, <coughs> okay, so what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say uh, OSDR, so I'm going to use OSDR as if it's C in because it's a new name, C out, because it, it is a reference to C out. So I'm going to say OSDR M value but I have to make sure that M value actually has a value so I'm gonna say if M value exists show it otherwise don't do anything or I can show an error message saying uh, OSDR empty name empty name and then after doing all this I'm gonna say return OSDR <coughs> so this is the standard way of writing display everyone when you're writing this way you receive a reference of OSDR you are returning a reference uh, a reference of O stream you return a reference of O stream you use that O stream to do your printouts and then after you are done you're gonna return it for casking the face cascading effect later on do we understand this Now that I have done this, uh, who said no? David. <clears throat> Sorry, Stephen. Which one I call you, Stephen or David? Stephen. Stephen, yeah, Stephen, yeah, what's up? Uh, why are we returning the OSTR for that? For cascading effect. So later on in my main, so let's be, let me actually save this as the company main again. Company, company main dot cpp. 
so <clears throat> let me change the change to main over here so when I have <coughs> When I create a name, I'm going to include name over here, include name.h, okay, and let's have include io stream <coughs> and using namespace std. So in here, I'm creating a name n, okay, now I'm going to say c out, enter. enter your name okay then in here I haven't written it yet but I'm gonna say n dot read correct to actually read the name are we okay down to this point Stephen yes now I want to display the name and go to new line because sometimes you want to display the name halfway through something so <clears throat> I can say over here see out hello and then I want to put the name, so I'm gonna say n dot display. Okay. I don't need to put anything because I want to print it on C out. You could have said C out over here, but it doesn't need it because it defaults it. Are we okay down to this point, Stephen? Yes. What does display return? Display returns O stream, correct? returns the OSDR that is actually C out, correct? So now yes. in my program in here, I can say, how are you? Because display is returning C out, I can continue printing after that. Do we understand this? Yes. Okay, so that's why you always return OSDR for cascading effect later on. Are we good? All right, <clears throat> so that's that. So now let's do the read thingy that we are doing in here. So I'm going to write over here the read very quickly. So read is doing the same thing in here. Uh, do I have a read in my utils to read a, a string? No, it's just get int I have. Okay, so I'm going to actually create a read over here <coughs> in my utils to actually read a string. So in here, I'm going to create a, a, a read function. And as I said, read functions that we create, it's going to always be the same. So I'm going to do it the same way I did it over here. I'm going to say include IO stream. The reason I'm doing this because I want <coughs> it to work for all the other things that I'm using. So I'm going to say STD, I stream, <coughs> read C string, so it's going to read a C string from I stream um, STD I stream reference ISDR that is defaulted to STD C in. <coughs> so I'm going to write this, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to write this later. I'm going to write this later, but for now, I'm going to finish the, uh, the implementation of read that I have. So in this read, I'm going to say, uh, 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 oh, I, I forgot something very important in here. <laughs> in that read thingy, I have to put it in a C string. So, so it's going to be a character pointer C string. So it's going to read it into a C string, and that's why we are doing this. So, oh. Uh, where did I put it? Sorry, I put it in the wrong place. In utils. So it's going to read it into a C string. That's what, what is going to happen. Okay, so let's go back. Now I'm going to come in here. So in here, now I'm going to say u dot read string <coughs> into uh, A value that we have so mm, I'm gonna change the this one like uh, this I'm gonna make it character pointer uh, the reason is that I want uh, it to return the value so mm, return the string that is doing I want it to be dynamic so I'm gonna do it like this to to make it work so I'm gonna say 
m value will be set to read string from istr <coughs> and that's what it's going to do okay and then at the end i'm going to say return istr obviously because i am reading it i have to deallocate it first so because i don't want the same thing happened as set i am going to do it like this i'm going to say copy and i'm going to delete it over here like this <clears throat> so i'm going to first delete the value and then i'm going to read the value over here so <clears throat> what uh, uh, read string is going to do over here would be this in utils.cpp <clears throat> so um, I am going to create the code over here because I want to make sure it's dynamic and I want to make sure uh, yes uh, there is a question Stephen go ahead for that why don't we create a private method for deallocate that the functions can use yeah because i haven't done it yet after i'm done I, i'm gonna see that they are exactly the same thing and i'm gonna just call it over and over but because we haven't gotten there because it was at the end of the list i i am pretending that i don't know how to do it yet so we are not at the allocate yet got it so you're right essentially i need to have a deallocate in here and instead of keep calling this i should actually do this <clears throat> i should put it over here and call the allocate over and over instead of keep instead of keep uh, uh, calling those two lines i can say deallocate you're absolutely right <clears throat> But because I pretended that I haven't seen it, I want to talk about it later, but you did it now, so that's that. Anyways, <clears throat> so we are going to come into utils.cpp over here. We are assuming that when somebody is entering something from screen, um, it's not going to be more than a thousand characters. So for now, I'm going to implement it like this. Then later on, I'm going to make it better. So in here, I'm going to say <clears throat> character um, temp, and I'm going to make it a thousand characters and actually it's better to be 1024 um, uh, be coefficient of uh, number two it's you'll you'll find that later on that's thousand in computer science so it's essentially 1k what i wrote over there now in here i'm going to say <coughs> uh, istr dot get line because i'm getting one uh one uh, uh name in here and that get line of mine will put it in temp up to a thousand characters so that's gonna get the name for me and put it in there after i do that <coughs> i'm gonna create a pointer to return to return okay and that to return of mine will be set to new character uh u dot str len of uh, we are already in utils right so we are, we can just say sdr len sdr len of uh, uh, temp plus one and then uh, sdr copy into to return the value of temp and then return that to return so so what this does <coughs> What this, uh, so in here, I'm not, I'm not going to actually, why it's giving me an error of to return. <clears throat> so in here, I'm not going to say read C string. I'm going to actually call it read dynamic C string because the, the person who's using it, I want them to know that what it returned is a dynamic memory and it has to be deleted later on. So now my read dynamic string will get the value and put the value for me inside the name and I can use it for company name later on too so in here I'm gonna say read dynamic C string and put it in value and return it and that's what's gonna read the string are we okay with this so after doing all these beautiful stuff now I have a name that I can get the value I can display its value I can read its value uh, <coughs> so if I want to actually work in uh, prg.cpp, uh, let's see what we're going to do. So in here, I'm going to say, um, 
if I just run it like this and, and, and go about it with this, um, um, I, um, let's actually do it and see what happens. So I have to make sure that I have to deallocate it at the end, otherwise it's, it's going to fail. And uh, uh, also I need to have some kind of a thing to put this thing in, a, in an empty state. So I'm going to create another function over here. I'm going to call it void set empty. So set what set empty does actually is setting um, uh, the name into an empty state, safe empty state that is recognizable. And in here, I'm going to say m value is set to null PTR. And this set empty should be called at the beginning of the lifetime of the name. So in here, I'm going to first say n dot set empty. And then I can say enter your name and continue. So let's walk through it and see what we did. And, uh, and after this, we're going to talk about the topic of the day. Are we okay down to this point? So let's actually use this. I'm going to actually start my program now. So it starts the program. Everything got compiled properly. I'm going to come over here. So first I'm going to write name and name what it has. It's all garbage. So because it has garbage in it, I won't be able. So if I did not call set, I would have problem. Let's let's show it to you. So actually, let's let's first do it properly. So I'm going to say set empty. It comes up over here, sets the value to null. So now everything is good. Now it's going to say enter your name. It's going to come into read and in read, it's going to deallocate first because it is empty. There is no problem with it no problem you can delete another pointer delete won't do anything and comes back up over here now it's going to go to read dynamic string have a temporary of 1024 locally statically allocated memory get the line for me so in here i'm going to say fardat soleimanlu and i hit enter this is going to get the size and return it for me uh, add one to it and then copy Fardat Salimandu into the newly allocated memory to return and return it out. So because that is dynamic to return is going to be what is returning. It's the address of the memory it allocated. And this temporary thing is going to vanish because it's a local variable. It's going to end at the at the end of the function. So to return will actually return the uh, character pointer into value. So this value actually points to Fardat Solimanlu in memory and returns ISDR, which nobody picked it up, which is fine. Now it's going to say hello and it's going to go to display. In display, it's going to see it is not null. So it's going to say hello, Fardat Solimanlu. Comes out, returns OSDR. That OSDR is picked up with how are you and new line, and that's what's going to get printed. And it's going to deallocate, come to come out delete Fardat Solimanlu, set it to null and go out and we are done. Are we okay with this name thingy that we have written? All right, now that we have created, half of you are not replying. Steven, you're not happy with this. Nguyen, Kachun, Samuel, why you're not replying? Be active, reply. Thank you. You can even reply incorrectly with like um, <laughs> as we, <laughs> but it's okay. Anyway, so so now, so now, let's say we forgot to put set empty in here. Then what's going to happen? If I run the program, compiler won't tell me anything because nothing is wrong with that. It comes in here. N has some garbage value in here. Then it comes to read, and in read, I want to deallocate the memory that I had in it. But because I did not set the value to anything, it will try to delete something that doesn't belong to it. And therefore, boom, program is going to crash. Okay, so if I forget, this is what's going to happen. S or if I forget to, but or if I forget to deallocate at the end of my program, at the end of my program, where is my program? Let me just take close these things out. We don't need them now. 
if I forget to deallocate at the end, then what I'm going to have will be memory leak. Are we, do we understand this? <coughs> also, sometimes I do not want to read the name. I want to, so let's start with this right now. So, um, what can I do in C++ to actually make C++ do this automatic stuff for me so I don't have to do it? Like the things that I always want to do, I want my class to be empty when it starts its lifetime and I want my class to deallocate its memory when the lifetime is over what can I do there is a way to do this and this is called using a procedure not a function procedure not a function so what I'm about to write right now looks like a function but it is not a function so am I writing a function now? The answer is no. Nancy, really? Seriously? You are giving it to your six-year-old sister, aren't you? And Xiaoye, you are saying yes too. I am not supposed to write a function. I am not supposed to write a function I am NOT writing a function I just wanted to make a point that what I'm about to write looks like a function but it is NOT a function I am NOT writing a function my question is am I writing a function and your answer should be no straight no you are NOT writing a function okay so this type of procedure that I am writing is not a function. Why it's not a function? Because you cannot call it. These procedures, they, call, they are called automatically at the moment of birth of the object and the moment that they die. That's why these functions are called constructors and destructors. They are very awkward because they don't have a return type. Constructors are procedures that they don't have a return type, type and their name matches the class. So in here I write name like that. That's the default constructor. Constructor. Okay. And immediately I'm going to write the destructor. Destructor is an awkward thing too. It doesn't have a return type and the name starts with a tilde. So I have to say over here name okay and that will be the destructor okay so anything you write in name will happen when the object when the class name is about to come to life and anything you write to destructor will be called when the the object is about to go out of life so obviously the proper thing to do is in name constructor I should call set empty and in name destructor I should call deallocate now doing something like this I do not need to worry about allocation and deallocation so in here I do not need to set empty and I do not need to deallocate because it will be done automatically as a matter of fact I'm gonna enforce so outsiders cannot call my deallocate at all and set empty at all so what I'm going to do I'm gonna make those things private I'm gonna say I only I can set myself to empty and only I can deallocate myself so I'm gonna take these things up and put it right over here those are private but because constructor and destructor are part of the building structure of the name they can call them and therefore when I write the run the program see what's going to happen now when I run the program it wants to create the name I'm gonna press F11 see what happens it jumps into the constructor and it constructs it by setting it to empty so now my constructor has an M value that is null and then it comes over here everything is done properly let me just uh, run right down to this point I'm gonna say run to cursor what is your name it's gonna be Fred Soleil and I hit enter it's gonna say how are what happened to the OU at the end that's no that's very strange I don't know what happened over there what 
the devil just anyways so let's not talk about that now we are at the end of this and when we are at the end of this right before it wants to end the lifetime of n because it wants to return right before it wants to return because n is going out of scope it has to get destroyed therefore the destructor is called automatically deallocating the name and we are done okay oh it's uh, visual studios bug son of a gun it doesn't show the rest of it anyways all right so now uh, do we understand what constructors and destructors are now i have uh, not constructors and destructor you don't have many constructors you have only one okay so now i want you to attract your uh, i, I want to ask you a question and please answer after thinking is this constructor and are these constructor and destructor functions good the question another question that I have can I call a constructor can I write over here name like that can I call a constructor the answer is no yes perfectly correct so you cannot call the constructor now the compiler will not give you an error message if you attempt to call it something strange happens that I'll explain later but for now obsessively it's like a religion obsessively I want you to remember that you are not to call a constructor okay w you understand when you can use that syntax but it's not calling a constructor now you can create a constructor with actually with arguments which means if I want to create a name over here and say over here name say M and I want to set this name to Fardat Soleil if I want to do something like this how can I do it how can I pass one argument to my constructor so so I can actually initialize the value for it it's very simple you simply call a const recreate a constructor that has one argument so in here you can actually create a regular constructor we call it custom constructor okay name in here I'm gonna say constant character pointer uh, value okay constant character pointer value and then I can actually set the value simply uh, uh, call the uh, set function and remember because this is the constructor uh, the default constructor is not called okay you have to manually set m value to null and then call the set function to set the value something like this so now your name will actually set the thing if you forget it's going to crash okay if you forget this one it is going to crash uh, because now you are calling a one argument constructor all right so now if I run the program in here I can say how are uh, um, how are you uh, and I'm gonna uh, say n uh, m the display uh, uh, I'm going to say is here also okay so now if I run the program <coughs> as you will see I'm not going to get an error message it's going to come the first one is going to be the default constructor that is called or no argument constructor so it's called two different things you can call this either default default or no arg constructor okay so the first one is set to empty the first one is set to empty and uh, actually the second one I can actually call set empty to it's better not to manually do it although the result is the same but always call the function because that's more descriptive so now it's gonna go out now when the second one is called because a value is provided it's gonna pass that value uh, okay so it says doesn't it so I'm gonna um, uh, run it one more time there we go 
so that we did now I'm gonna press F11 so it goes to one argument constructor and in the one argument constructor it is going to set the uh, name to empty and then set the value to the value that is coming in which is you know what it's going to do uh, and then uh, it's gonna uh, uh, get the, the so enter uh, get the other name so that is uh, Jack do and then it's gonna say hello display Jack do and also go to display of M and uh, because the value is now for far that so it's gonna say hello far that so and return and say is is there also now I'm at the end I am pressing F11 as you see um, um, when you construct different objects you are building them on it on each other so um, I used to do it with markers in class but we don't have markers so I have this one this uh, 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 this hard drive and I have this hard drive so what happens is that you create name first then you create M upon it so the bottom one is N then you are creating M so this one is at the bottom this one is at the top when you want to remove them from memory it happens in reverse order because the, the top one is at top so that is going to first go away which is M and then the bottom one will go in which is N so now if you see they are gonna die in reverse order so first it's gonna deallocate for that Soleil as you see which is the second one you create then it's going to deallocate the first one that was Jack Doe and we are done so the objects are they, they die in reverse order are we okay with this so if you have values that you want to set uh, and you have more than one then you can have more than constructor with more than one argument okay and if that's the case with our name over here let's say let's say I want to have a title too so my name may have a title like Mr. Soleimanlu or something like that if that's the case then you can have something like like character mm, M title over here so I have the second one that I want to create so um, the I'm quickly setting this thing uh, set empty will set both of them so M title null PTR okay and set will set it uh, so for for setting this is setting the name uh, setting the title is a separate thing so let's say the title is only created in the constructor and when I when we are displaying it so in display over here I'm gonna say if M value do that uh, but before that I'm gonna say if M title and M title zero exist then I'm gonna say OSTR M title and I'm gonna put a space afterwards so if I want to give the person a title we can do it so not in a regular way but let's, let's say that's our business logic if you want a title you have to create it right off the bat so in here I'm gonna say a two name thingy so if I have a constructor that has two things and the allocate is supposed to deallocate both of them where is my deallocate so the allocate is gonna delete that one and delete the title and M title set to null PTR obviously from previous lecture you remember you recall that we could actually uh, set everything in here that's a very good practice so it's a good idea to do it like this so you don't have to uh, worry about different destruct destruct co constructors if you by default set it to null PTR then any constructor called will set that one to null automatically so now that I have this one I can actually create say a name with constant character pointer title and uh, constant character pointer name 
So now I can actually have a constructor with two arguments. And if I create that uh, the, the code for them, in here I'm going to say set empty, of course. I'm going to say set uh, name. So that's the name that is being set. And for the second one, I have to do it manually. I'm just going to do it. This is just for example to show you if that we can have constructors with more than one argument. So what I will do in here is es essentially this. Uh, let me actually, yeah. So it's going to be this. And I'm going to get uh, the code in here and simply do that. So if title exists or and title is not zero so these two titles are set if that's the case then m title will be set to uh, will be allocated like that and i'm gonna set m title to the title other than that nothing's going to happen and title remains empty and everything is good so uh, I don't have to worry about anything so because set empty sets the title to blank so now uh, I can actually uh, uh, um, create uh, another one over here like this I can have over here name uh, LMNO and I'm going to call it LMNO, I'm going to call it P in here or S I'm going to call it and in here I'm going to say sir and in here I'm going to say John Doe. So now uh, this S of mine <laughs> alright so we're going to do like this and now the, the 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 second one over here has a two argument constructor and when I run it it's going to actually call the two argument constructor for me so the first one is first gar one argument now it's going to go create s and when it create s it comes to two argument constructor uh, sets the title as you see that happens before the, the constructor automatically so if you set everything null over here then you don't have to worry about it in your constructor i strongly suggest always to initialize your values in the constructor and set empty is called it sets the name to john doe then it's going to set the title so the title is not null so it's going to create the title and copy and everything now um, the name thing is going to happen uh, and it's going to say hello, it's going to say how are you, and it's going to go over there. This is here, and now it's going to go to display. And in display, it's going to, uh, where is the display? Check to see if title exists. Yes, so it's going to say sir, uh, and then show show down John Doe, and it's going to say um, hello, your highness. Okay, and now when it goes out, obviously the one that dies is S first because that's the last one. So the first one that's going to die is the last one, and it's going to deallocate the value that is John Doe and the title that is Sir, and the rest of them are going to get destroyed the exact same way. Are we okay with this? Now, one argument constructors can be called like a regular constructor too. So you could r call name like this m bar dot sorry, man. This you could have done it like this. There is no problem with that. Okay, so <clears throat> this is okay too. I'm gonna say same as above. So you can call it like that, or you can call it using uh, initialization. So, so that means initialization, initialization is a call to a one argument constructor. So, and that applies for everything. So, for example, you can say integer i one hundred. That is perfectly okay. And if I do see out I over here, you will see that actually calls the the thing. So in here, 
you will see it says hello 100 you see that so that 100 thingy uh, you can use you can use it for anything so it's the same thing same as int i set equals to 100 initialization at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor and also you can actually call it like this with the new uh, uh, universal type of initialization you can so go integer i and you can put a hundred and that's same as above <coughs> so these are all three different types of calling uh, default constructor and are we okay with this so again using that initialized thing that I said you can actually call this like this name M and you can go for that Solimanlu and this would be same as above too okay they're all the same are we okay with this all right now the final thing that I want to talk about is actually this okay so this set of mine so let me just put over here I'm gonna call it uh, um, a constructors and destructor dot cpp okay so that's the main for that let's come over here and do something else now we've done all these good stuff I'm gonna get her I'm gonna put name n and I'm gonna say Fred Soleil then in here or no I'm just gonna create an empty one okay so I'm gonna create an empty name and I want to set it over here so I'm gonna say set to Fred Soleil then if I of course n okay then I have to say over here and uh, uh, dot display to print it out do we understand this do I need to do I need to do I need to do, do you want me to walk through this okay sure okay <laughs> so first it's going to create an empty name as you see so it's going to create an empty name it's going to set it to empty and then it comes over here sets the name to Fred Soleil so it comes over here sets the name deallocates and sets the name dynamically allocates it then it's going to display the name right here as you see Fred Soleil displayed it <coughs> and then at the end the destructor is called and it's deallocated okay now there is this keyword there is the keyword in C++ called this T H I S this this is a pointer that points to the object you are in your and in your implementing so for example if I am in name in here I'm returning a void you see that instead of void I'm gonna call it I'm gonna say return a name reference so my set is now returning a name reference I'm gonna come back over here to set and return a name reference now at the end I want to return the owner of set so whoever whoever name is setting I want that to be returned out I can say return this but problem is that this is a pointer it's the address of the current object how can I convert how can I convert a pointer to a reference Nancy how can I convert a pointer to a reference anyone knows how can I convert a pointer to a reference seriously how can you get the content how can you get how do you know get the content of a pointer so let's say if I have over here if I have 
if I have integer pointer p and I have p holds the address of i <coughs> how can I get to oh sorry an integer how can I get to i how can I get to i using p how can I get to i using p what if I want to set i using p what do I put over here and set it to 100 with 1000 so i becomes 1000 how do I do that this is IPC 144 and everybody's thinking Thank you. Thank you, Yukti. Okay, thank you. Oh my god, Xiaoye, what is that? Seriously? <laughs> I said, but you have a very complicated mind. Just look what she wrote. This is actually amazing. This is perfectly correct, but uh, that's that's very like yeah. So <laughs> you don't need to do that. So I'm gonna say target of p so if p is a pointer to an integer to change it to a reference i put an asterisk beside it do we understand this <coughs> so to make a reference to make a reference out of a pointer what do i put beside it <coughs> cocky To change a pointer to a reference, what do I put beside it? An um, percent. No, an asterisk. You just saw it. An <laughs> asterisk. <laughs> <clears throat> you put an asterisk beside it. So that's what I'm going to do in here. So in here, I'm going to say, because this is returning a reference, not a pointer, if it was returning <clears throat> name pointer, this was good. Okay, but I'm not returning a name pointer. I'm taking a name reference. Therefore, I'm going to return the target of this. So that becomes reference to the current object. So now my set in here, ladies and gents, my set in here is returning the reference uh, of the current object. If I run the program, it's absolutely no difference, as you see. Okay, so. Uh, Kiranda, if you had a question? So when I run this program, no. it is absolutely no difference now. When I actually run it, it comes to set, and it set does all the allocation, but at the end, it's returning the reference of the current object <coughs> to, <coughs> to the main program. <coughs> Sorry. All right? So in program in here reference of which object is returned back set belongs to whom can you tell me who set belongs to set belongs to who in here set belongs to which object in this code set belongs to which object in this code perfect that's good thank you not name Kiran Dip or activate your uh, microphone. You, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So set is returning a reference of an object. Name is not an object. Name is a class. N is what is returned. Okay. okay. So in other words, so in here I'm going to say <coughs> Nina <coughs> Do. That's N, and I'm going to create name F, and I'm going to say F.set <coughs> Fred Soleil. F.display. <coughs> now, sorry, just a second. Now, the set over here, the set at line 9, it's returning a reference of F. The set in line 8 is returning a reference of N. Do we understand this? Mm -hmm. 
because set is returning a reference of n, I do not need to have another line for display. I can simply say over here dot display and then new line and in here I can say dot display and go to new line why can I do this because set is returning the reference of n therefore after it's done the reference of n is sitting over here that's going to call the display of n and it's displayed and then in here this set calls the this the, returns the reference of f therefore f dot display is called and the outcome will be identical to what we had before do we understand this so whenever in any function any program you want to actually make sure you want to hold uh, the uh, if you want to get the reference of the current object you can use this if you want to find the address of the current object you can use this but if I write this over here that doesn't make sense because I am not inside the class this only has meaning only has meaning if it is inside a class only other than that it just doesn't make sense to write this this can only be used inside a class are we okay with this all right so now that we have done this we have created our name and everything and we are good to go uh, let me see what else do we have in here with the name that I need to set like for example if you want to set a name to another name let's say I want I have uh, F and I want to set F to Nina Doe I want to write a function like this I want to write n dot set and I'm gonna write F over here I want to do something like this S oh sorry set Nina Doe to F uh, if I want to have something like this then obviously what I need to have over here is another set function that sets the name so in here I'm gonna use the same thing remember try never if you have it if you are having a function that is returning void you can always return the reference of the object it comes handy so this set is going to get a constant <coughs> name reference to copy okay so that's what it's going to get how do I create it it's very simple and straightforward so I have access to name over here so it's essentially exactly like this with absolutely no difference so what I can do in here is literally say <coughs> set to copy dot name value sorry so set my name to the value that is coming and let's say I'm not gonna touch the title so whatever the title is gonna be carried around so when I'm copying a name from another the title remains let's put it that way okay <clears throat> so if that's the case or maybe I should copy the title too uh, let me copy the title too <clears throat> so I have the so I have the procedure over here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy this I'm not gonna reuse that code because I hate that when you have a code you don't reuse it so in here I'm gonna have a <coughs> um, void set title constant character pointer title <coughs> and I'm gonna create this private uh, thing um, uh, private method uh, <coughs> so set title essentially sets the title and it makes sure that it deletes m title first and sets m title to null okay so why you keep saying delegate okay so so it's deleting m title so now I have set title and I can use set title whenever I want to I'm gonna go back to my name in here and <coughs> in here instead of setting the title separately 
when I'm uh, in a, in here, I'm gonna actually say um, set title. I'm gonna pass the title to it, and I'm gonna do the same thing for copying in here. So I'm gonna set the value, and in here I'm gonna set set <coughs> to copy dot m title. So I'm gonna copy the um, <coughs> I'm gonna copy the m title. And I'm going to copy the thing. So now this is going to uh, set the values of the of the title. So if I do this, now I can actually say now if I put um, if I say end display, I can actually display it immediately. Display, you will see that now n will actually will not be Nina anymore, and it's changed to <coughs> and it's changed to uh, uh, Fred Soleil. Build errors. What does it say? Must ret oh return this. I forgot that. Return this, <coughs> and I re re run it. And now, as you see, oh, it says empty name. So it didn't work properly. Let's see why. So in here, I'm gonna come to the here, and I'm gonna see why is it not working. F5. So two copy is null and Fred Soleil. So it's gonna set the name. So it comes in here. It deallocates. Okay, deallocates everything. Good. Let it do it. <coughs> then it is not null. So sets the value to Fred Soleil. Fine. And goes back. Now it's going to say, s oh, I forgot to put set title. My apologies. It's set title, not set name. Now it's going to work properly. So now it's going to go over here and set the title, hopefully, and the second one is for isolate. Okay, are we okay with this? <coughs> the problem is that you have to always remember tricky stuff in here. Now that I have this set set up, <coughs> mistakes may happen. Take a look. For example, in here I'm going to say name reference uh, <coughs> fref. Okay, and I'm going to say fref is equal to f. <coughs> so f ref and f <coughs> sorry n ref I'm gonna actually do n ref so n ref and n are identical things n ref is just a new name for n are we okay with this now if I do something like this and by mistake I write n dot set n ref. What is going to happen? Because n ref and n are the same, it's going to essentially set n to itself. Do we understand? So by doing this set, I'm going to just run right to this point to see what happens. I'm just going to come right to this point. When it comes to this point, When it comes to this point, it goes inside. So to copy is actually to copy is actually Fred Soleil. But the problem is that the current one, if I come on this, that is Fred Soleil too. So I am copying me to myself. I am not aware in this function that to copy is exactly this. So what happens in here, it comes and deallocates me first. So now the name I wanted to copy is null. And there is nothing in it. And because of that, crazy stuff are going to happen. So I simply copied my, what the devil did I do? So it's completely crazy. So if I do not want mistakes like th this happens, this comes really handy. Why? Take a look. <coughs> when you are doing a copy, a set that is copying an object to a type of its own, not to make mistake, you can always come over here in this set, say, if this is not equal to the address of to copy, which means if two 
variables are in same address of memory, they are the same. So now if I do this, the action of copying will never happen. Now if I actually run this program <coughs> and come to the set for copying, so let me just come to the first one over here and run it right away to that one. So when is actually being copying F, when it actually gets in here, the address over here, <coughs> the address over here is 8A8 as you see at the end and the address of to copy is 8D8 so there are two different objects therefore copying will happen now when the next one is coming in when it comes in here it says this one is 8A8 and when you look at the address of to copy that is 8A82 they are at the same address therefore no copying happens therefore no mistake happens they are both remain Fred Soleil so if I am by mistake copying myself if I am by mistake copying myself that self copying protection will help me to get over it so this prevents self copying and that's two of the usages of this this to return reference of me this to make sure that I am not copying myself I, are we okay with this? <coughs> so what I want you to do now as a practice before you come next time go to this source code that we have for today first of all add constructors and before you do anything convert the names over here to the object name that we have so include the name bring the object name in here and use it so the company should use the name and <coughs> the employee should use the name too so instead of uh, having those uh, those uh, names over there use the object name number two create constructors and destructors for employee and name <coughs> to uh, destructor for yeah uh, destructor for name uh, for employee is not needed because employee does not have any dynamic memory allocation so you can just let it be there is no dynamic memory allocation here you don't need to destroy anything but for employee for company you need to because it has dynamic memory in here okay so do that as a practice and uh, uh, I'll see you the next day are we okay with this are we okay down to this point perfect please go through this uh, code code these code they're very important a very important thing to understand constructors and destructors and how they work and everything um, uh, that's the lecture for today have yourself a beautiful day and uh, uh, any questions before we go any questions somebody's calling me over here all right any questions All right, have yourself a beautiful day and I will see you soon.